This is going to be a short video explaining some of the features of the Max ECU and how to interpret the wiring diagram. So you can see here, this is the diagram that will ship with your Max ECU. In this case, this is the race ECU. Let's start with the power section. All red wires that are labeled 12 volts in this diagram come from the same supply which is from a relay or from a you know, regular key switch, your choice. Uh, but it comes through 215 amp fuses. This is just suggested what we, what we recommend into the power block breakout or these, the Molex breakout, one of which goes to all of the injector wires and all of the coil wires if needed. And then the other one uh, is for the ignition for the coils so it's a little confusing when you look at the harness by itself but when you look at the diagram from the uh, heater to the wideband to the ECU to all of the 12 volts to the coils and all of the uh, 12 volts to the injectors comes from one place and that gets wired in through the power connector and max ECU we supply the mating half to that as well Ground, very similar. It comes from chassis ground uh, into the ECU and then to the cylinder, you know, somewhere on the cylinder head, preferably the engine block. For 5 volts, those are supplied by the ECU, and we have two 5-volt supplies in the race. Uh, G1, the terminal G1 will supply 5 volts to most of the things like throttle position and any auxiliary zero to five volt sensor that you may have for oil pressure or fuel pressure, nitrous pressure, wastegate pressure, whatever. Uh, but all sensors that are connected to the Max ECU must use sensor ground, not chassis ground. We elevate the sensor ground from chassis ground to, to isolate noise problems. So sensor ground, in this case, H1 is, is split off to throttle position, all the temp sensors and all of the three wire pressure sensors. Two wire coolant temp sensors require a sensor ground as well. And then the wire that comes from the ECU, the signal wire that is a that is pulled up to 12 volts inside the ECU. So that that's how the sensor gets 12 volts and ground from the ECU. Moving on to the ignition output, the blue wires will be labeled on the harness ignition one through eight. This is a TTL signal, which means it is a 5-volt square wave signal. This is dot switch ground. The injector outputs switch ground. This can be peak and hold or saturated. The GPO out 1 through 8, those are, laid, those are all green wires. Those all switch ground output. On the trigger side of things, a regular two wire or VR or magnetic sensor uses white wire for signal and a sensor ground, a VR ground, and it's separate. It's, it's labeled H2. Only use VR ground when connecting your, your two wire crank trigger or your two wire cam trigger. If you're using a Hall effect, VR ground will be sensor ground. You'll still use VR ground, but you will use a 5 volt one of the just split off one of the 5 volt wires to go to your Hall effect sensor so each sensor will get a 5 volt wire the white trigger wire going back to the ECU and then the brown wire for for uh, sensor ground and then the wideband is is already wired for you the only wire that you will have to supply is the 12 volt wire which is comes from the same place as all the other 12 volt wires from a switch 12 volt source and that is our uh, positive, our positive voltage for our heater in the sensor. We, the ECU can use two different styles of wide bands, the 4.2 or the 4.9 made by Bosch. The ECU will come standard with the 4.2. The 4.9 is an option and it is not wired for that sensor. Moving on to the second connector. The same thing holds true here. 
you will get five volts from connector one, which is the, the connector we just went over, five volts from, from connector one. So, you know, you can pull five volts from, say, G1. And you can split that off, and you can run that to your second connector analog input section. So, uh, and then sensor ground from connector one as well. And so then you can send the, the output wire directly to the input wire for that zero to five volt input. In this example, we're showing this is for an extra analog sensor or for the e-throttle main and e-throttle backup pedal position sensor for when you're using drive-by wire. And then of course you have your EGT one through eight these are marked red and yellow. There's, you don't, there's no thinking there. These are wired and terminated for you. You can use type K or type N sensors for this. Max ECU digital inputs can also be used as VR inputs and that's software selectable. So it can trigger off of an edge of a square wave or it can trigger off a of zero crossing either way. H2, 3, 4, and H1, 2, 3, and 4 are motor drives. These are 12 volt, varying 12 volt signals to your drive by wire um, throttle bodies. GPO out 15 and 16, these are pulsed 12 volts. So the Max ECU can supply pulsed 5 volts for ignition, pulsed ground for GPO 1 through 8 and then pulse 12 volts for GP out 15 and 16. And it'll also do a variable out 12 volts, one H1 through, which is also labeled in the software as GPO, but it's also labeled as motor one through, motor one positive, motor one negative, motor two positive, motor two negative. And then of course the knock sensors, these are basically microphones. They will have their own sensor wire and own ground wire and it is labeled as knock ground in this on the diagram here make sure to connect the knock sensor ground only to the knock ground input and that'll be it for this short video thank you for choosing max ecu